Hi guys, welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. My name is Caitlin and today I'm going to be doing a good old fashioned get ready with me. If you saw the title, you know I have an exhilarating story about how there was a bat in my attic. It was terrifying. I dramatically tell it. Am I a little dramatic in my storytelling? Yeah, probably. Am I still traumatized? Yes, absolutely. Uh, would you also be dramatic and traumatized if a bat got into your attic? Let's be honest, probably, right? So uh, if you wanna get ready with me using the Nomad Cosmetics Tokyo Harajuku palette, and uh, I've got a giveaway today, and get ready, here's some other things about my channel this year, my goals, keep on watching. Before we get too far in the video, I just want to say again, there is a giveaway in today's video. I am giving away the Jeffree Star Cosmetics Thirsty Eyeshadow Palette as well as a few other side drugstore goodies. So if you'd like to enter into that giveaway, make sure you watch this video for details on how. Okay, so it has been a while since I filmed my last Get Ready With Me. I think it's been about two months. I think I saw November was the last one I posted. I think um, when I got ready with you guys with my Smoky Glow Midas Cosmetics palette. I'll leave a link to that in my description down below if you're interested in seeing that. But just like that video, I just wanna focus on talking to you guys. So I'm not necessarily gonna talk about every piece of makeup I'm using, but I will leave a list of everything I'm using as well as prices and links in the description and then I will talk a little bit about the eyeshadow palette that we're using today when we get to it so I hope everyone is doing well I think that's how everyone starts out these videos right like how are you guys <laughs> I mean I could probably guess but that's not for me to say that's for you to say I guess I think everybody is glad it's the new year but still you know understanding that it's a new year that it doesn't really mean anything changes, but um, I don't know about you all. I didn't necessarily make resolutions. I did write down some goals for myself just in life, and I think I really want to make this year a vision board, which is basically where you put pictures and photos and things that you associate with those goals and you hang it somewhere that you see it every way every day just to remind you like, hey, these are the things I'm working for. This is why I'm doing what I'm doing. This is what I'm you know, trying to manifest into the universe. So I really do think I wanna make one of those this year, but I'd be curious to know if you guys made any resolutions, what they are, if you have any goals for yourselves in this year. And if you do, let me know what they're in the comments. I would love to hear them. So the first thing I really want to tell you guys about is this, this story that you probably saw in the title of this video about the bat in my attic of my house. And then if we have time left, you know, I have a few other just kind of more general life update things that I can share. But the, the story is the funny part. That's the thing I want to make sure I fit into the video. So I would say this was maybe about a month ago this happened, sometime early. December. So one night I was getting ready for bed, brushing my teeth to be exact. And Wesley, who is my boyfriend for those of you that might be new, he was here as well, obviously. He lives with me. And he was in the other room. He wasn't in the bathroom where I was brushing my teeth. And so as I'm brushing my teeth, I all of a sudden hear a sound. And it sounds like something scratching, okay? So I hear it. It's not very loud, just, you know, audible enough for me to notice it as I'm brushing my teeth. And so I stopped to see, okay, am I really hearing something or do I just think I'm hearing things? Because, you know, I sometimes think I'm hearing things and they're not there. I don't know if that happens to you guys. But I stop and I do hear it. So I kind of yelled to Wes in the other room and said, hey, did you accidentally lock one of the cats in a bedroom? You know, I'm thinking, okay, Salem or Adelaide, one of the cats 
accidentally got shut in a bedroom. We usually keep the bedroom door shut so they don't get in there, but maybe one of them was already in a bedroom and we didn't realize it and we shut them inside and they're scratching at a door to get out, okay? So, Wes says, I don't think so, why? And I said, well, I hear something. So of course he comes towards where I am into the bathroom and kind of stops and listens to hear and see if he can hear the scratching that I say I'm hearing. And he does hear it. So he starts searching all the bedrooms. He figures the same as me. There's gotta be a cat just in one of these bedrooms that's locked inside. He doesn't see a cat anywhere. So then he goes downstairs and finds both of the cats. So it's not a cat. So at this point, I'm sitting there going, okay, well, that's something scratching at a door. So what door is it since you already opened all the bedroom doors and nothing came out? And what is it? Something living, alive, that's not our pets is in the house. Yikes. So um, we just get really quiet and we're just kind of like listening. Where is it coming from? Where is it coming from? So we realize it's coming from the closed door that leads to the attic. And so I'm like, oh no. Something's in the attic. There's something up there. We have a chimney in this house um, and it doesn't go into the actual house. There's no fireplace or anything, but it's not sealed off either. So we're figuring, okay, something made its way into the chimney and now it's stuck. It can't get out. It's in the, it's in the attic. So we're figuring it's like a mouse or a rat or something like that. It started out as us just being like, okay, well, you know, we'll take care of it tomorrow and, you know, put a trap up there or something. It'll be fine. But then when I got into my bedroom, you could hear all of the scratching and scurrying and things like that from my bedroom. And I just was like, I'm not going to be able to sleep hearing that all night and being worried about it getting in the house and etc. And we do have electricity with a light switch and everything in our attic, but it's not like a finished attic. So some of the cords are just like, you know, strung about and so Wes was like oh, I don't want it to like chew anything in the attic that's not going to be a good situation either so I think I should go up there and catch it and I'm like you're gonna catch a wild animal I don't think this is gonna end well so eventually he convinces me like we need to take care of this so it's sounding so loud though that I said to him like I'm not sure that it's a mouse or a rat like maybe it's a squirrel or a raccoon or like I don't know it sounded big okay so he's like, oh, I'll catch it in a cup. A cup, you guys, a cup. No, so I was like, what are you gonna do? Put your bare hand over the cup once you've scooped it into it and have it like biting your bare hand? No, not a good idea. So we figured out a container that had a lid that he could seal it, which ended up being a very good idea. At this point, one of the cats has also heard this and realized and he's kind of spazzing out and he wants to be let up to capture, kill, whatever it is, which Wes considered that too and was like, oh, I should just let the cat up there and let him take care of it. I'm like, that cat sleeps in bed with me. I don't really want him touching a potentially diseased animal and then crawling into bed and, you know, licking my face or whatever. So that was a no. So ultimately I took the cats and I kid you not guys, I went and hid in the basement because I was like, I don't want to be any part of this. I was worried when he opened the door, it was going to run out and get loose into the house. Like it would run past him and get loose. And I was like, no, no, I, this is not happening today. I'm not doing it. Mind you, this was, uh, I think a Friday night and it was already like 1030 close to 11 at this point. So like, you know, like I said, I had been brushing my teeth. I was ready to go to sleep, but not after this situation. So Wes gets this container, right? I get the cats. I go in the basement, one, because I'm scared of whatever's up there, two, because I don't want the cats to be interfering and trying to catch and kill whatever it is he's trying to capture and get out of there. I hear him open the door, I hear a loud thud and him like, oh, yell something. And then he says, I got it. I'm like, okay. So he says, I need you to open the front door because he's going to throw it out, like let it out into the wild. He didn't want to kill it either. And so I do that, he throws it out and he goes, well, it wasn't a mouse. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. So Wes says he had opened up the, the attic door and saw something small and really did think it was a mouse just based on its size. 
he started like putting the, the container towards it to catch it and it started hissing at him so he's like I don't think this is a mouse <laughs> but he didn't know what it was so he just continued to you know go towards it and he said it actually hopped from the bottom step of the attic down onto like the hallway of the upstairs and that's when he could see it better in the hallway light and that's when it spread its wings and he said that's when I heard the oh because he was like oh no it's spreading its wings it's a bat it's gonna fly and he just hurried and tried to slam the container over it before it was too late and it was in the house and you know he knew I was gonna kill him if that happened obviously like there's we would have just I think I even told him at one point we're just gonna have to burn the house down that's just the only solution at this point so obviously just kidding hopefully you know that but I'll say it too um, so he caught it it was a bat and he said he knew it was a bat not only because of the wings but as soon as he caught it in the container it started doing a little like eek 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 little bat sound so it got outside it didn't do any damage it wasn't hurt it flew away it was all good but that is the story of there being a bat in my attic it was very traumatic to me by the way still not over it i had originally wanted to make the attic into kind of a book nook like a place to read because it does have electricity and a nice little window for natural light and wes was like so do you still want a book nook up there knowing that a bat can get in and i was just like uh, we've been here like a year and a half and that's the only thing that's ever gotten in or the only thing that's happened in that full amount of time but I don't know I at least feel like we need to seal off that chimney before considering that by the way I told you guys I wasn't going to talk about products but please don't buy the Morphe mattifying continuous setting mist the regular is fine the mattifying is awful it doesn't really mattify it doesn't last long and it keeps like spraying out this really gross residue I hope you guys can see that but like it's not misting good and it just looks like white thick inappropriate stuff so I'm using it up but mm -mm, don't purchase it I'm not repurchasing it Whew, so I hope you guys enjoyed that story other than that in life there's not a whole ton going on since my last get ready with me um, I did actually have the virus I got it unfortunately in early November, so I was out of work for a bit, but luckily I was not very severely ill, so I was able to recover just fine and be okay. Luckily, I feel very thankful for that. And if you're new here, I am full-time a teacher in a public school, so um, my school's also been closed as far as students coming in. I've still had to go in the building, but I've been teaching all through the computer and just doing like remote digital learning, which is hard because I teach chorus, choir, but we're making it through. I think we're supposed to do one more week virtual and then they're talking about the kids coming back. So we will see. I also finished my master's degree in music education, which I'm very proud of myself for because I finished it during a hard time and did a lot of work when we were in lockdown and it's taken me I think five years now to complete it but it's done and I'm very very happy and feel accomplished about that so let's go in now to the Nomad Cosmetics Tokyo palette and this is inspired based on Harajuku I believe that's how you pronounce it sorry if I pronounce any of these names wrong but this is great you guys and many, much like many other YouTubers, I've kind of said, okay, I need to like cut down a bit on my spending. I really want to upgrade some of my equipment on the tech side for my channel, but in order to do that financially, I'm going to have to cut back a little bit on cosmetics. So I'm going to do a new series that talks about what am I buying each month versus spending each month, kind of inspired uh, by Lauren May Beauty's channel. And just to hold myself a little bit more accountable to see like what I'm actually spending, don't know if I have any rules per se for myself, but or I, I don't even want to call it a low buy per se. So I've never really tracked my spending to know what it was to reel it back, but I know it's a lot. But I did buy this before this year, I bought it in December, so I told myself it didn't count. And I don't have anything that has pastels like this. So in my mind I thought, you know, it's not like I'm buying something that I'm like, oh, I could have duped that out. I know for a fact I don't have anything like any of these pastel shades in my collection. So it's all good. And it's got an amazing row of duochromes. 
I don't have that many in my collection and I've been very into in the last month researching like indie brands. I don't know why I wasn't on board before, but I'm really into it now and I feel like a lot of the brands I want to try this year in 2021 are indie brands. So without more talking, let's do the eye look. I'll zoom in a little. Okay, so I have a little bit of a look in mind here. Um, I'm going to start with this middle shade here, just as kind of like an all over base shade. This is Hanami. I thought I've got my master's degree out of the way because that was really a big time sucker to write my final thesis. Um, I'm really looking forward to having some extra time to do some house projects. Like I said, Wes and I do live in kind of an older home. We got it for more of an affordable price because of that, but there's definitely some remodeling and updates and things that we want to do. So we are planning on working on the kitchen next. We just ordered a microwave, had a microwave, but we want to do one that's like mounted over the oven to have more counter space. There's not a lot of counter space in the kitchen. I'm going to go in next with Kuroi Niji. It's this like light gray shade right here and I'm going to put that just in the crease. So after we put in the microwave in whenever it comes in and get that installed, then we want to build some more upper cabinets because there's not very much storage in the kitchen. And then I think we'll be ready to move on to other rooms, at least for the time being. It's not great as far as like the aesthetic goes or the decor, but the functionality at least of it will be complete at that point. Now I'm going to go in just on the outer corners here with Visual Kai. That's like the darker gray here. By the way, guys, I'm using this particular palette today because of the results on the poll I had on my Instagram stories. So if you're not following me on Instagram, you can do that um, to be a little bit more involved in the content that I'm planning and making. And I had you guys choose between this and the Too Faced Pumpkin Spice palette. And 80% of you guys that voted picked this one, which I'm glad by the way, because I used the Pumpkin Spice palette once so far since I got it. I actually used that on New Year's Eve for my look and I have not used this palette at all. So this is kind of my first impressions, at least in my head. I'm going in next with Takenoko Zuku, which is this pastel kind of purple shade, and I'm doing that. On this portion, I haven't touched yet, like the inner portion of my eye. That shows up pretty good. I always worry with pastels why I don't really have any that they're not gonna show up very much since I have such light complexion, but this isn't too bad. It might be better if I hadn't set my tacky base and gave it a little more to stick to, so I'll have to keep that in mind and play around with it a bit in the future. All right, so next I'm going to apply a little of my Ulta Beauty Glitter Primer. I'm just going to put that on kind of the center area to use one of these duo chromes. I know you guys love the NYX one, the NYX Glitter Primer, but this Ulta Beauty one just happens to be what I have right now. And since I just said, you know, I am trying to cut down a bit on my purchases to upgrade my tech equipment for you all for my channel um, and for myself, honestly, because, you know, I want to be happy with the quality of the content I'm producing as well. Um, I'm just trying to use up what I have and this Ulta Beauty one is one that I happen to have. so. Hopefully it still works. I've liked it in the past and thought it worked just fine. So I don't think there will be any problem with it. And I'm not putting it all over the entire lid. I'm mostly just focusing it on the center here, but I'm going slightly on the inner and slightly on the outer. Okay, and I'm going in with Takeshita Dori, which is this deeper purple duochrome. I'm gonna try just with my finger. Wow, that's a lot just on the finger. By the way, guys, I didn't even like talk about it, but let's be real. Not only because of the pastels and because of the duochromes, but the freaking cat embossing. I mean, look, if you know me or you've watched my channel for a while, I'm a cat lady, okay? Like, I am a cat lady, so obviously I had to have this. Ooh! Oh, okay, so this kind of is reminding me, speaking of my last get ready with me, this reminds me a little bit of the shade Leno from the Smoky Glow palette by Midas Cosmetics, but I would say 
That one has a little bit more of a blue purple shift and this is more of a purple to pink shift if I had to compare the two. And I think the purple in this one is a little bit deeper than the purple in that Midas Cosmetics one. But I'll have to swatch them side by side at some point to truly be able to tell for sure. Oh my gosh, it's so pretty, guys. That is so pretty. I am living my kawaii dream. This palette, by the way, speaking of goals and updates and things, I, it has made me decide, like, I really want to get a PC and get, like, a setup for that and do, like, I really love video games, you guys, and I do want to start streaming and maybe do, like, a Twitch and stuff like that. But I don't have a PC, I have a Mac. So, um, I decided, though, I, like, I want my whole PC setup to be all, like, kawaii, cutesy, Japanese theme. And this palette just, like, I don't know. It, it really brought all of that desire to fruition to where I was like, I'm ready to pull the trigger on this. I really need to make it happen. I'm just gonna go in again and blend both with that lighter purple shade on the inside and with the deeper gray on the outside just to make sure those colors don't get lost with that amazing, amazing duochrome that we just added. Oh, it's so pretty. It, I kind of like this like, this like uh, smoky duochrome vibe too. I've never really done like smokiness with this, but I will say I watched a few tutorials on this palette from Vinyl Beauty, Nikki Raven, and Beeping, and I got kind of some ideas in my head before I sat down with it myself. And I think, I think I want to do something a little bit different on the bottom, so I'm just going to go with Gairu, which is this uh, satin, it kind of looks purple, I think, on the screen here, but it's more of a light pink in real life. There is a bit of fallout in the pan, so I would say probably you would either need to do your eyes first instead of complexion, or like what I'm doing is just like severely making sure that I'm tapping off all of the excess into the pan so that you don't get fallout on your complexion. So while I'm finishing up here, I think I'm gonna to talk to you guys about the giveaway I'm doing on my channel. It's gonna go and start today. And that is my giveaway of the Jeffree Star Cosmetics Thirsty Palette. Yes, the Thirsty Eyeshadow Palette. I will link my last video down below in the description if you have not seen it, but it was a Jeffree Star Winter mystery box unboxing and try on and one of the items I got was the thirsty palette and I already have the thirsty palette so I figured that would be a great giveaway item also because recently in December I hit 200 subscribers thank you all so much for helping me hit that goal and also if you're watching to vinyl beauty Debbie thank you so much for helping me hit that goal that was something I wanted to accomplish for 2020 and something I was able to accomplish with your help so I thought this would be a great time, you know, a landmark to give back to you guys for supporting me. If you're interested in seeing what that palette looks like, you don't know what it looks like, or you wanna see maybe some looks that are possible for that palette before you enter, you can look in that video I've linked in the description because I did do a look with my palette. Like, like I said, I already had one, so I pulled out my used one and did a look with it. Um, so you can get an idea of what it looks like and whether you want to enter. I will say, you probably want to enter if you don't have it though, because that palette I think is not supposed to be around for long. I don't know. He said it was getting discontinued the same time as the Alien palette, but then he brought it back. I think it's on his site right now that you can buy it, but who knows for how long. And I'm also going to throw in a couple other things that I've just accumulated that I'm going to pass on in that giveaway, more drugstore items, like some Revolution lipstick and things like that. I think I have like a NYX blush and things that are all brand new, still packaged makeup that you can win. In order to consider yourself entered in the giveaway, here's what you'll need to do. And I'll put this in the description as well. But to be in the running, you need to be one, subscribe to my channel, two, like this video, that means you're going to click the thumbs up button. Thirdly, leave a comment on this video, whatever comment you would like. 
and in the comment make sure you leave like your Instagram or your email some way that I can contact you if you are the winner and then lastly be following me on Instagram and again here's my handle and I'll leave it linked in the description so to do all of those things will enter you in my giveaway and um, I will select a winner next week on Sunday when I put up not this video but the next video and I will comment on this video to say who the winner is on next Sunday. Hopefully that makes sense. Again, I'll put it all in the description as well. well good luck to you all and one of you will win that giveaway. Um, things to look forward to on my channel. Um, like I said, I really plan to do, you know, I don't know if it'll be every month. It probably depends how much I spend, how much I use up. Um, but, you know, tracking, what did I use? Was it really worth it? What did I buy? What came into my collection? I think that'll be helpful for you guys to comment on kind of like what things do you see coming in my collection that you're actually interested in seeing me film with and you're interested in hearing my opinions on them. Um, talking about the brands that I want to try this year. I think there's about 10 of them I'd like to try this year. And then also, because I hit 200, if you've been on my channel for a while, hold on, I can't talk and do a lip liner. Anyway, if you've been here for a while, you know, Wesley comes on my channel once every 50 subscribers. That was kind of the deal he made with me when I started this channel. So we have done sheet masks. We have done me painting his nails during quarantine. That was when I hit 150 and 100. And then at 150, he picked out my full face of makeup. So we're looking for ideas for what we should do next since I hit 200. He knows he's due to come back on my channel, but we haven't agreed on what to do. I said he should do my makeup, but he's terrified he's going to stab my eye out. I trust him more than he trusts himself. I said maybe I could do his makeup. He's like, mm, maybe. Um, or I said like I could do my makeup and he could do like the voiceover for it. So if you like any of those ideas, or if you have additional ideas, let me know in the comments below. Well you guys, I'm supposed to go to Japan this summer for the first time. Let me tell you, this palette especially is making me live my kawaii dreams, 100%. I'm ready, I'm ready, take me now. I mean not because you know the pandemic, but in spirit, in makeup, I'm, I'm ready. So, I hope you liked this look. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much if you have watched this far. Don't forget to enter into my giveaway and I hope to see you again on my video next week. Bye!